everybody, if anybody is there at this time of day or morning or night, I'm not even sure what it is. It's called morning. It's called morning. It's called Looks, morning. Yeah. That's what it's called. It's nice that it, it's the sky is the color of robins. Robins the, what? The birds. <laughs> robins what? The, the the bat, birds. Batman and Robin. Bird Robin. You know, kind of reddish. The red pink kind of. Beautiful Robins are not color. pink. Yes, they are. They've got pink bellies. They've got red bellies. That's why they're called red robins. No? It's kind of red pink. Like the red, sky. Red pink. It's a robin color. You ladies out there know what robbed, I'm talking about. You know what robin robbed, color The sky is, has right? been robbed of its color. Right. There is a smell. What's the smell? Well, I thought first I Did thought... Did you have a shower? Excuse me, I never have a shower. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it's you then, if you never have a shower. <laughs> Shut up. What? I thought, first I thought that I smell something like cigarette smoke. It's you, if you didn't have a shower, it's you, you smell. Everyone needs to have a shower in the morning, otherwise they just smell of bed. I don't smell of bed. How do you Excuse know? Excuse me. How do you know? How do you know what you smell of? I know exactly. Everyone what is I so smell. comfortable with their own smell that they can't even smell themselves. Oh, that's right? not true. In general, it's. I true. can smell when I smell, and I can smell when I don't smell. How can you smell when you don't smell if there's nothing to smell? <laughs> well, because I can smell that there is nothing to smell. If there is something to smell, I can definitely smell it. Okay, what can you smell right now? Right now? Right now I can smell that, that incense there that I'm burning. Or whatever it is. That the oil, the essential oil. That's good, no? Yes, it is. But you were imagining that you could smell cigarette smoke. Yes, I was. What's that about? I don't know. A, a, a nasal mm. hallucination, I suppose. A nasal <laughs> hallucination. A, nas a nasination. Yes. You're having a nasination. Yes, I did. I did have one. Yes. Yes. They say you do that when you've got a brain tumor. So uh, <laughs> I hope I don't have one of those. I think I think I'm just. I think <laughs> that it's would just explain lack of sleep. a lot. <laughs> lack of sleep. Yay. How much sleep did you get last night? I don't know. A lack. A lack. That's the opposite of a lot. It's not good to have a lack. I know it's not good to have a lack, but on the other hand, dun, dun, dun. you get to experience interesting things like nasal nations. Nasal nations. Oh, sorry. Not nasal nations. That would be. That would be. <laughs> like France, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The France where everybody speaks to their news. Uelle le garden. Oh God! I shouldn't have started you speaking French again. It's always slightly disturbing. Dans le jardin et le. Le voiture. We don't have a jardin and we don't have a voiture either. We don't have a voiture? <laughs> no. There's no voiture. No voiture and no jardin. You can see the balcony. The world is the jardin. Um, the bus is the voiture. The, the world is your oyster. Oyster. And, uh, <laughs> Oysters. Yes. What are you talking about? You've, you've been watching too much Octonauts. Probably. Yesterday, definitely, yes. Because you put Octonauts on as our morning, if, uh, evening, sorry, as our evening uh, movie kind of thing. You do that. I, my microphone is so close to my mouth that I keep hitting it with my lips. Don't. Well, no, that's, it, yeah. it's sort of okay. I mean, my, my, my beard brushes against my microphone. Yeah? And it's okay. And you can't hear that. No, you can't hear that. That's good. Right. That's good. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't worry about your lips brushing against, because it's not the microphone, it's the, the, the <laughs> the fuzzy cover. I have the realized filter, as it's that called. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't hear the kettle yesterday at all. Did you listen for it? I did. Are you sure? Yes. You listened for it? Yes. And there was like not a trace of a sound. We no, just no looked like... We no just, trace of kettle. We just looked like two lunatics talking about nothing. Well, that's normal. <laughs> that's normal. <laughs> It's normal for us. It's normal. It's the, the insane asylum. 
It's really hot this morning. Is it? Again. You think it's hot? I think it's just about average. I checked my phone last night and yeah. it said that it was going to be three degrees hotter today than yesterday. Really? Yeah. Now, wow. my phone could be lying because it often tells me things that are not true. But, and it um, was really warm yesterday. We were running around in short sleeves. It was really warm yesterday. Yeah, that's good. That's that's the second even Indian people summer. People were wearing uh -huh. jackets outside, which I didn't really understand. I didn't get that at all either. I think people just go, "Oh, October Alter jacket." jacket. jacket. Yeah. yeah, they do that. They do that with little kids as well. Oh my God! In Slovakia, people out there, there. in Slovakia, the kids are in getting overdressed all over time, like babies, right? You've got like July, 35 degrees outside, and you're going to find these babies all wrapped up in their, in their little cocoons because they're babies, and babies have to be wrapped up, and that's it, period, right? Well, it's not thinking, isn't it? There's I a mean, lot of not thinking that's happening <clears throat> everywhere. Or, or like you've got April, right? April is the funky month here in Slovakia because it can be really warm and it can be really cold, right? You can have snow in April, and then you can have like 25 degrees in April. And... Uh, I've had this. I've had this before. You know, when we lived in, when we lived in Bistrica, which is exactly where we live right now, <laughs> we lived <laughs> elsewhere in between. Uh, I used to take Will out when he was tiny little to these playgrounds and everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And 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 you know, we would go outside in our sandals and our shorts mm -hmm. because yes, it was April, but it was freaking hot out, hot out there, and we were, okay. you know, sweating. And you would have these mums just looking at us like we were mad and their kids were like you know jackets and and long trousers and one of them was asking oh do you still put tights on your baby underneath those trousers and the other one was like yes of course it's only april and i'm like oh my god poor kids they must have been sweating their little cute thumbs off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the amount of non-thinking that goes on <sighs> is, uh, has reached Biblical proportions. Yeah, I know, I know. In Slovakia, also, your baby has to wear a hat all the time. You go to Scotland, right, and you look at the kids, and they're running around, short sleeves, it's like five degrees out there, right, and they'll be running around like barefoot and snot hanging down to their chins and no hat and no scarf and it's just, you know, tough kids. They're just tough kids. You come to Slovakia, you get out of your house in the winter, and everybody's like, Oh, your baby needs a hat or they'll be cold. You get out in the spring or in the autumn and everybody's like, Oh, it's so windy, your baby needs a hat. You get out in the summer and everybody's like, What? No hat? Oh my God, your child will get a sunstroke. Your child has to wear a hat all the time in Slovakia. Otherwise, all the grannies that can see you are going to just, you know, probably have a heart attack and die because your child's <coughs> not wearing a hat. Yeah, well, fuck them. Um, <laughs> because I they're know. wrong, basically. They, my kids never wear a hat. They're wrong. My kids never wear a hat unless they ask for it, right? I mm. mean, Zora's cold. She tells me she's cold. I offer, would you like to wear a hat? And she says either yes or no. If she doesn't, well, there you go. Your ears are going to be cold or they're not. I don't know. I don't know if they're cold or not. It's called <laughs> bodily autonomy. You have to let the child experience the feeling before they know that they're actually, you know, so that because if you don't let them ever get cold, they're not going to know that they're going to be cold if they don't put their hat on, right? There's just going to be a constant power struggle. Put your hat on. No, put your hat on. No. It's a good point, you know, to let the child experience the feeling. Yeah, and you know how we talk, what we talked about yesterday about that school with those two classrooms, mm -hmm. right? The one that was used to have freedom and and knew how to handle it, and the other group that never had freedom before and suddenly they they just couldn't they didn't know what to do with it right mm -hmm. basically well i was thinking about that a lot and it and it kind of applies to You're right there. yeah I need, I need to play with my feet <laughs> it kind of applies to everything and, and i mean to individual kids as well mm -hmm. right so if you never give your child a freedom in a certain area and then suddenly give it to them, they will automatically binge on it, right? They mm -hmm. will automatically um, have the opposite reaction. And, and then you can, you can come to a conclusion that, oh, my, the, my, my kids cannot self-regulate. It's all a myth. 
um, it's you know it's not it's not possible and and I'm just gonna have to go back to the control but that's just him them reacting to to the to the sudden you know freedom it's the natural reaction of you know they don't they don't know how to use it yet they have to learn how to use it they have to learn how to self-regulate right yeah the uh, the, the self regulation the uh, self-governance is lost very quickly yeah and that was yeah. visible in will not being able to put himself to bed yeah absolutely also um it's it's the so it's the same thing like you know you, you you take your kids outside and and you always force a hat on their head and then suddenly you go outside and you say okay well we'll trust yourself do what you want kids are gonna go like oh my gosh i can i can go outside without my hat i i better use it while i can right and they're going to go outside without their hat, even even if their ears are freezing off, right? And then they're going to complain that their ears are freezing off, and and you can, you know, mother's going to be like, oh, that this obviously doesn't work. I still have to take care of them. I still have to control what they're wearing. But um, that's not, you know, it's. I have a friend, right? There was this big presentation of uh -huh. Na Naomi Aldort in Bratislava. Who is that? She's a she's a big parenting person. She's a big peaceful parenting person. I've seen her on Facebook, and that she I think you she know, does some live videos. She's a, she's a big child autonomy, unschooling, uh, you know, respect and 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 that that kind of thing person. And uh, our friends Lucia, who who sometimes watches this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, she's really cool. She always you know questions things, asks mm -hmm. questions and stuff. So uh, when Naomi Alder was talking about bedtime. You know, she 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 said that you don't actually Guess have what's to. What's going to happen? And you're gonna blow your nose. So when she was saying that you don't actually have to put your kids. I wanted to get my mic off, but I don't want to be sneezing right now. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> okay, I'll wait. The sneeze appears. I w I will wait for you before I continue my ramble. I'll have a drink of my drink. Imagine, imagine this was your drink. <laughs> mm -hmm. let, me, let me get my mic back on. Right. Um, can I have the um, the incense yeah. stuff? I'm gonna stick it up my nose again. So Lucia was, you know, she would like raise her hand and she would question it. She would say, you know, she would start talking to. If you're on the, if you're watching the video podcast, this is what we are using. There we go. Albus oil, it's called. Albus. It's Albus like a mixture of different essential oils. Yeah. So she would, she would raise her hand and she would talk to Naomi Aldert and then she, then, then she called her up on the stage and they discussed the topic and everything. I, I don't know exactly what they discussed. What's her second name? No, no, Gomez. No. Oh, that's her, yeah? Yeah, that's her. And Quite a big girl, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. she's she's uh, she is she is big. She talks to she she talks to the president because she didn't like the law that 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 was, um, you know, proposed get, by the get, government. Why can't she get homeschooling made legal then? How can't she get? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. She was she was fighting a different fight. She was all busy that fighting a different fight because she has a private kindergarten and she is homeschooling her kids by the way and uh, and she needed to fight a really damaging law for all the private kindergartens and mm -hmm. <laughs> nurseries and stuff um, what was the law what, what, what I don't it? know honestly I never I never explored further but it was Everybody something has to about wear, I, I love the government t-shirt no it was something about something that was supposed to really uh, disadvantaged women that wanted to put their kids to 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 nursery or kindergarten that were younger than the three years of age or something. sponsorship when you attend private kindergarten. Something like that. I don't know. I don't, I honestly don't know. Okay. I, I didn't look deeper into it, but I know that uh, she was really fighting the good fight out there. And I... And that's going to be my mum. No? <laughs> Moving like a ghost. No, I didn't see her at all. 
That's what I said. Moving like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, but is it her or is it, is it the kids? It's the ghost of your mother. Cause she's dead because okay. I killed her last night. Shut up. Put a stake through her heart. That's just... What? That's just... What a stupid thing to say. What? <laughs> anyway. Why? Why? Because. This is ridiculous. It's violent. Horrible imagery. Oh, uh, peaceful parenting. I'm not... I'm not I'm... Who was the person who was going to... <clears throat> oh, never mind. We'll get on to the aggression thing later. Anyhow. <clears throat> so... Uh, also, also, I didn't tell her not to put the kettle on in the morning because it hasn't been picked up by the microphone. I don't believe that hasn't been picked up. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that part okay, again. Okay, hasn't been picked up because at you all. can't hear stuff. You don't, you don't, you don't know, right? Listen, you can't, you, you can't even barely hear you when you were talking and your microphone was down here. How can <clears> this be, <throat> be the, the, the sound from over there in the kitchen picked up? Look, if you can it? hear it, then the mic can pick it up. That's the principle. It did not pick it up, okay? So you can go back and listen to it, but it it's did not. It's going to really annoy me, so you know that. I know that. And I didn't bring up this topic. You brought up this topic. I know that it's going to annoy you, and you're going to have to deal with that. You're annoying me with this now. Because I wasn't thinking about it at all. Now you brought the topic up. Yes, because I was getting you ready for the fact that it is going to happen yeah. at some it's point. It's really annoying. So, uh, so she talked to her, and you know, and, and she questioned this, and she wrote down her question on Facebook as well. She was like, "Well, if I gave my kids the freedom not to go to bed, they just wouldn't go to bed, right? And they'd be mm -hmm. they'd be so overtired. They would get themselves so overtired that then they would have a difficulty to fall asleep later on, and they would just, you know, go on as long as they can. And and there were many parents. Well, I don't know if there were many, but there were parents commenting on the stream. They were like, "Yes." Uh, same experience here, you know, my kids would get really tired and then they would never go to bed by themselves. I don't understand that. But the point is... I don't understand how you can be overtired and not go to bed. <laughs> well, that's what I was talking like about. The, make, point, the, make the point is that if, if, if you give the kids a freedom, because you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to do an experiment, right? I'm going to let my kids... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to put my kids to bed and see what happens. And mm -hmm. the, the point is that if you do that, like once, twice, or even for one week, the kids are just going to binge on their freedom, right? They're just going to go like, yes, we don't have to go to bed, so we're going to do the opposite. And they're just going to stay up as long as they can because they're not used to having the freedom. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to listen to their own body. They don't know how it, what it feels like to to be so tired that you go to bed by yourself, right? So it's it's a bit tricky. <laughs> either you either you trust your child completely and you let them go through the whole process of finding their own bodily autonomy or or you don't. And 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 you you know guide them towards so what's better? earlier bedtime. I don't dare say what's better actually. I don't mm -hmm. dare say what's better because I think it depends Welcome on. Welcome to the conversation, Mr. Kabar. Mm. <laughs> I think it's individual for every family because mm -hmm. every family has different habits, different, um, what do you call it? Um, Biorhythm, you know? Mm -hmm. they, they get up at a different times. It's okay for us because we're not in a rush in the morning. Mm -hmm. But if you if you have to get up at six and you need your kids to get up at six and you need your kids to be, you know, fresh and ready for bed, you don't you don't really you can't really not sorry fresh and ready for the day from the bed. <laughs> so you can't really experiment. You know, you don't have the freedom. You don't have the freedom to let them um, just. Um, you know, go through the process for three months of the, of of of, of finding their yeah, of finding their autonomy. Um, also, kids. Just let them be. Generally, uh, some kids and teenage, most of teenagers as well, are are generally kind of night creatures, aren't they? They they would stay up late and they would get up late in the morning. I don't know about that. I think it's. I think it's completely varied. Um, Could be my brother, for example, was always stay up, stay up late. I mean, what is and the question is, what is there?
to do? What do you enjoy doing? What do you like do, like doing? Mm -hmm. And if I think back to when I was a kid, where there really wasn't much in terms of mm -hmm. <laughs> entertainment that existed, you you stayed up late if there was something on TV, if there was a film on, or if there was something on the radio. So there was a lot of the external stimuli there. Ah, uh, but no, you can find things to do. I mean, look at Zora, right? No, I agree with you. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that um, you either find your own things to do, mm -hmm. or you're affected by the world around about you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will stay up late if there's something happening which is late, mm -hmm. but they won't do it all the time. No, probably not. My brother, for example, was a, was a, was a guy who would go to even parties. Even people who go to parties need to sleep. Yeah, I know. He, uh, yes, but, yes, but you, sleep, you sleep in in the morning if you can, you know? I mean, I, I was the kind uh, of kid yeah, who would don't get a, stay up until midnight. You don't get sleep there. And then I would sleep till like 10 o'clock um, if I could, if I had the freedom to do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, fair enough. My I mean, brother that freedom naturally, disappears very quickly. So. Yeah, naturally, my brother would uh, would would go to bed early, and she would be annoyed naturally. if I made noise, right? Because we had a we had like a, a room, we had one room, one one kid's room, and that was it. So he'd be really annoyed if I if I disturbed him in the evening, and then he would get up at seven o'clock in the morning, even at the weekend, and then I would be annoyed because he just, he woke me up and he disturbed me. Why did he get up at seven? That was just his 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 biological clock. That was just his there was thing. no reason. No. It's very weird to get up at that time when there's no reason. He to was get just up. an early riser. You know, naturally, naturally. But he played go to computer bed early games, right? So I imagine that he'd stay up late. It's coming again. Oh, oh, a sneeze. Oh dear. Yeah, you sneeze. <laughs> oh. Okay. You're not supposed to sn stop a sneeze. You're supposed to sneeze a sneeze. I, I, I Sneezes sneeze. are there to be sneezed. I sneeze, I sneeze. Good, good. It's good for you. <laughs> Shouldn't you be dreamt, dreamt, dreamt? Shouldn't you be saying dreamt to dream? Yes. Oh, God. Shards of tissues. Yeah, you always shard them. Look, I, I, that's, that's within like 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> Stop showing everybody your snotty tissues and go get a clean one. Okay. Yes, you can. This is ridiculous. So yeah, I, I, I understand why it is difficult to give children autonomy, and I don't think that children should have autonomy in, ev in everything, right? I mean, the, the radical unschoolers say that, you know, child can self-regulate when it comes to technology time, when it comes to everything, basically. But I'm a bit skeptical about that because some things are a trap, right? Television is a trap. Television is, is, is made to get your attention. It's made to get your, you know, passive vegetable brain to, to, to chill out and I'm back. Did you just miss me? not do anything. Um, you know, it's a trap with the, with the advertisement and everything. It's just, you know, it's, it's uh, designed. It's designed by psychologists you know what was, to, what was great? to stick to it. I'm talking. You don't, you don't care that I'm talking. No. Just go in and interested. just start you know, your own thing want, in the middle of my sentence. <laughs> I wanted to add to what you were saying, but I'll shut up now. So, <laughs> so I think I like that, that part from the remix yesterday. A, yeah, a part of a, a a part. Now I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say that I think that you have to regulate some things because some things are made you know, to be regulated? No, to something manipulate. I think like television is made, made to, to manipulate you into watching a lot. And I think some of these things have to be have to be controlled. Natural processes, natural things like sleep and food and 
and uh, playing outside or whatever. I, I don't think that has to be control. Yeah, you know, I think kids can do pretty well themselves, um, knowing when they're cold and knowing when they need to go to the toilet, and well, sometimes, <laughs> and knowing. Mm. Even that, you know what? I feel like adults can't do that. I had a friend, and she did like a self-led uh, de de nappying, right? She let her child to just completely hands off. Right? I'm not going to potty train my child at all. And her daughter potty trained herself, right? Yeah. She said around the age of two, two and a half. I can't remember completely. And she told me this child that potty trained herself did not do the usual thing that kids do that when you hold on to it for so long as you know as long as you can and and when you kind of you know they shuffle and and you can see that they really need to be but they just don't want to do that yet what is that about why do they do that why does will do that well you see she said that the child that she's left completely to do it herself in her own time has never done that but mm -hmm. her older child that she potty trained as you do, you know, she started introducing it and she would put the child on the potty every 20 minutes to pee, blah, 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 blah. He did it. So once again, the <laughs> the influence of so the parents. Once again, the self-regulation uh -huh. issue, right? The child that was left complete freedom to do what she wants with her bladder could self-regulate better mm -hmm. than the child that was that was told when he needs to go. Mm -hmm. So they're like it's like they're still waiting for you to tell them when they need to go. Will is still doing that, right? You need to tell Will. Will you need to be? And he goes like, "Oh, you're right." It's like, like he like he doesn't notice. <clears throat> well, why can't we why can't we tell him to be more aware? <laughs> or you is can, it that you, can, you can, but that's not going to change anything. It's not going to make him more aware. Telling him is not going to teach him. No, no. I mean, it's just like you know. It's like it's like me telling you to be more taller. Well, then that's a bit messed up, isn't it? <laughs> because once you have a problem like that, it's not. You, well, the thing is, that's not really a problem. It? You just leave it. I think you just leave it, and and he's gonna learn eventually. I mean, we don't do it anymore, right? That must mean that we've learned at some point in time. Uh, yeah. Or. Yeah, no, in general, I agree with you. I can think of a few meetings that I've had that I've had to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> but that was probably because of lack of time, not because you because you needed to pee and you didn't know that you needed to pee, so you went to the meeting needing to pee, right? Yeah, was days where you have like like eight hours of constant meetings. Is, uh, yeah, and, and is you have crazy. no time to go to the toilet. I know that I worked in a restaurant as a, as a waitress, and I literally had no time to go to the loo for hours and hours. There's just I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. So there's two of us, which is a massive restaurant. Craziness. Yeah. Much 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 craziness. Totally. Mm. But then I didn't have any time to drink either, so I was okay. <laughs> How was your walk yesterday on the hill? Uh, it was nice. It was sunny, it's beautiful. The kids were a bit moany. Sora was a bit moany but she said she didn't enjoy the walk. Yeah. I asked her. Yeah, Why she's didn't like, she enjoy me? I don't know. I don't know. She, uh, she just wasn't feeling it, I, I imagine. Which is strange because she was really looking forward to it, you know? She was like, yeah, let's have a picnic, everything, da 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 da. We, we went there and we did have a picnic and we ate the apples and she enjoyed her apple and. Uh, but she was like, oh, my leg hurts, and she's like, oh, I'm tired. I think she was a bit, you know, she had a lack of energy. Might be the lack of sleep the previous night. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. You know, you can't just, it's really difficult to introduce self-regulations when you've already messed it up because self-regulation. She's, she's, she was really good at self-regulating her sleep, but sometimes, sometimes she recently, she started to push it. I think she's just experimenting, though. Mm -hmm. I think if we leave it, she'll just go back to her, to her old "I'm tired, I'm going to bed" thing. 
I don't know if you've noticed that recently she started to... Uh, she hasn't been putting herself to bed. Yeah. Well, it's kind of crazy because uh, she follows what Will does and then Jazzy follows what Zora does. <laughs> yeah, and, I know. And they were all dancing around the flat last night like... Like mad chickens. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty accurate picture, actually. Because... <laughs> Will can't dance and and doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> Zora can't dance but thinks she can. And then... Jasmine just stomps around. Yeah, yeah she's got those heavy feet. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Oh, God, yeah. But you wanted to uh, talk about aggression. I now. did. I did want to talk uh, about it because I... I I see a lot of people asking questions about it. Um, you know, it's kind of recurring theme where you where uh, where it's a because you see when your child is aggressive, mm -hmm. it's it's a bit of a um, problematic issue because it influences other people, right? I mean, if your child is being disrespectful towards you only, you know then it's a bit it's a bit easier to handle because you don't have the social pressure right i mean if the child comes home from school and in school they tell you that child's an angel and great and a great role model and then they come to home and they just snap and they're horrible it's, it's, it's still it's still kind of it's because they were keeping not, everything inside at school yeah exactly it's still not, it's still still not as stressful as having an aggressive child because the aggressive child influences everybody around you and the social pressure is massive because you're you're instantly being judged right as a bike you're instantly or you or you fear you fear that you're instantly being judged as a bad parent you know and you think oh my god these people are going to think that we that we have violence at home and that we beat each other or whatever because where, where does the kid learn it right mm -hmm. or, or they are you going to think oh my gosh what well, what are they going to think about my child? And then you think, oh my gosh, what is going to grow up out of my child? I mean, what is going to be a, what if he's going to be a criminal, you know? Why why is he laughing when he hits the other kid, you know? What, is what? He, who thinks that? The parent. They'll be like, what? is he, is my child, what? is my child enjoying the violence, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. It, the parents actually think like everything, that. Everything, I think that, okay? It, these are all thoughts that cross your mind. These are, cross my mind. These are all thoughts that, you know, when you when your child repeatedly goes out there and hits other kids or bullies them or, or does things like that, like, first thought is where does he get no, it from? No, 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 no. The, the, the parents being all confused about their own child being a bully is an absolute disconnect from reality. What do you mean? Is a disconnect from reality? You can only learn bullying essentially from your own parents. Well, no. Or if you don't have parents, caregivers, or the environment that you're within. Well, we're not really talking about bullying. Uh, or you can learn. We're talking or about you can aggressive not learn behavior. how to deal with it as well, which is also you know the same thing. We're talking. You see, this is this is where me and you have different opinions. You and I. Okay. Have because you opinion. think you think that kids pick up everything from somewhere. Right. Of course they do. And I know for a fact that they don't. If they don't pick it up from somewhere, do they pick it up from nowhere? Where they, do they pick it up from? Some things are natural. Some things are a natural behavior that you don't have to pick up from anywhere, like eating, for example, right? Or sneezing or whatever. Aggressive no, no, reaction no, 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 to I certain don't, situations. I have to disagree with that statement. I know you disagree. That's I what I disagree. just said. I have to disagree <laughs> with that statement because eating is a choice. And all choices depend on your psychological state. It's not a choice when you're a child. Uh, it's it, not a it, choice it, uh, when you're a child. No, I disagree again. It is. <laughs> you don't it have is a, a choice. You it's don't a have choice a whether or not you pick, It's a choice whether or not you, you choose to eat something or not. It's a choice whether or not you choose to eat something good or eat something bad. All of those things are choices. All of those things are decisions that have to be made that are affected by experience. Now... If you see somebody else eating a lot, you will eat a lot. If you see somebody else watching 
football matches, you will watch football matches. If you see somebody else studying and working with plants, then you'll study and work with plants. I'm talking about, I'm primarily talking about toddlers and preschool children. Okay? So am I. And... Haven't I just proved you If a two-year-old is hungry, he's going to eat. Look, anyway, it's not an okay. argument. Anyone who's hungry is going to eat. That is what I'm talking about. It's Unless, a natural thing. It's a natural need. Oh, it's I, a natural I, behavior. No, okay. The, but the quantity or the rate will be governed by the environment. What you eat and how much you eat will be governed by your environment. Yes, not, not absolutely. Absolutely. But what I'm trying to say is when kids are aggressive at that age, it does not necessarily mean that they picked it up from their parents. They can have super peaceful parents, okay, and they can still be aggressive in certain situations. Yes, this aggression is triggered by their environment that they are in, okay, or by their emotional state, but it's a natural, it's a natural uh, I disagree again. Uh, reaction to certain things. It's like the fight or flight mechanism, right? Did you oh, forget about that completely? I mean, <laughs> no, it's, but it's a natural reaction to a situation of anxiety. Look, you could, you could, look, I have to go back, otherwise I'll, I'll miss the point, right? Which is okay. uh, a lot of people think that peaceful parenting could be something similar to what the parents of the 60s did with a lot of their kids you know, giving them huge amounts of freedoms I don't know what parents of the 60s did with their kids I just told you you give them a huge amount of freedoms yes I just told you what they did they give the kids a huge amount of freedom they let the child be highly autonomous and they think this is peaceful parenting because they're not introducing their children to discipline or um I don't want to say punishment, but let's say consequences. And socially what happened was the children who, children of the 60s mm -hmm. became the punks of the 70s because they thought they could do what they wanted and it was okay. And this concept of peaceful parenting was actually a negative form of peaceful parenting because it was neglectful. Where are you going with this? Uh, the fact that peaceful parenting, if done wrong, can lead to aggressive behaviors. And that's a result of the parenting, not the result of the child's own so-called natural aggression. But you behavior. are talking about behavior that develops throughout the time. You're talking about learned behavior. You're not talking about natural reactions of the organism. You're not talking about biological reactions. Okay, I'm telling you that the anger in a two-year-old is the biological reaction. I think that if you say biological, I would say yes. If you, if you define that as chemical and hormonal, then you get closer to the, to the truth. And those things can be governed very much environmentally by contact that you have with your parent and the development of the senses. So, um, so that's environmental. That's not just the way it is it's not okay i would like to make it clear okay that the reaction itself is natural but uh the extent to which you're going to have it okay the child is going to express it does depend on the behavior because uh, on the behavior on the environment because there are environmental triggers of the behavior and you can prevent it by knowing what triggers it okay uh, but saying that yeah, this well, you can't because because most people you can to are a not certain aware extent of those things you can to a certain extent they're not extent. aware of what triggers well that's why we're here and talking about it right yes there we go 
so um, to make people aware of those things so what I'm trying to say is I forgot again this I didn't interrupt you there you just forgot yourself Can I help you? no 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 this is okay, then I won't. thank you very much um, yes the 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 in yes. the <laughs> yes yes look at the same thing except yes you positive. can you can influence yeah. it okay just because your child hits another child you cannot assume that he picked it up at home you cannot assume that he's seen his parents doing it and that's why he does it that's my whole point okay? i think in i think completely you cannot assume i agree but you can make a reasonable assumption which is not Okay. Evidence -based, you, do you think you that Jasmine that ever saw me scratching anybody in the face, or you, or 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 her brother or sister? No. I. But that doesn't mean that she can't have, say, witnessed it in some film or some cartoon or something that she watched that we didn't see. That we didn't see, that she watched that we didn't see. Yeah, there is nothing that she watched that I didn't see. Have you seen all the Octonauts episodes? Yes. That's terrible. I know. Um, but that's my life. What's your favorite one? <laughs> what's your favorite Octonauts? Have you seen them all? I've got, my, I've got my unfavorite ones, okay. No, what's your favorite? I don't want to know about your unfavorite I don't have a favorite one because I don't, I don't particularly enjoy watching Octonauts, okay? I don't have you a favorite Octonaut series. What's no. wrong with it? It's Captain Barnacles uh, get on your tickles. So, <clears throat> so yes. Yeah, so you cannot, you cannot really, you know, when your child is aggressive towards other children. I like the one with the giant squid. The first thing that you do is you have to calm down, and you have to realize that this does not mean that you're a bad parent. Okay. Because the aggression is a natural reaction to um, to certain situations, right? Kids, kids can be aggressive when they feel anxious about something, which we talked about. That's the, that's part of the fight or flight reaction to uh, to threat. Okay, kids can get aggressive when they're in a in a an environment which is overstimulating. For them, for example, you know, too much happening, like a, like a birthday party or something. They can, they can feel the need for a quiet and peaceful place, but they don't get it. So they, uh, so they become aggressive because they you, um, can't handle the, the the emotion of being How do you separate being <clears throat> being physical from being violent? Because you have to separate the two, right? Because um, the kids are physical yes. a lot of the time, right? Yes. So where where's the border? You know, where's the line, right? I, you know, I'm, let's take an example of the the kids being physical, like uh, like Zora jumps on Will, and then Jazzy jumps on Zora. You know, where's 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 the line? Well, if Will says, "Please stop it and get off me," I can't breathe, and the kids do, then that's okay. That's just them being physical, okay? If they don't, but he starts, she starts hitting him in the face, then obviously she's being violent, okay? I think violence is where you infringe on somebody else's rights physically. When we talk about physical violence, of course, because you can have other types of violences. <clears throat> can you? You got verbal violence, can't you? He was verbally violent. Uh, <laughs> violence. Uh, okay, maybe not violence. I think violence. Is the, the, the term of violence is physical. Okay, so. Um, a good name for a punk band, though. Verbal, verbal violence. Verbal violence. <laughs> you could probably nice alliteration there. Anyway, so I think that first thing that a parent should do is is just calm down and and you know shut down all the thoughts of oh my god everybody's going to think that I'm a horrible parent, mm -hmm. right? And the second thing that you should do is is just um, evaluate the situation, 
right? Try to, well, no, actually, the second thing that you should do is take a kid away from the situation, right? Because you don't, you don't want it to escalate. So what you do is you, you, you take your child gently, you know, you don't yell at them or whatever, you remove the child. And you have to remember that when kids, you know, toddlers, preschoolers, but even older kids, I think, when kids are being aggressive, um, they're not being bad, mm -hmm. okay? They're trying to deal with something and they don't have the tools to deal with it. So they, they, um, not a parent like, would have the tools to do with it either. It's it's like their last resolve. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. Resort. They resort themselves to violence because they don't know what to do. So they're they're having it. They're basically having a tough time, right? For some reason, when they're being aggressive. Uh, this does not mean that you can tolerate aggressive behavior or that you don't you don't tell them you know that that is wrong, but to yell at them or punish them in the situation when they are uh, exhibiting the, the aggressive behavior is completely counterproductive because it's just going to make them more miserable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what you do is you have to remove them from the situation mm -hmm. um, calmly, gently, you know, nicely. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, you're evaluating what's happening, you know, why is it happening? Uh, it's it's usually because you know you ask yourself did they have enough sleep did they have enough food are they maybe hungry are they maybe overwhelmed by everything that's happening are they overstimulated are they understimulated you know are they are they anxious about something are they scared of something there might be um, things that are happening in your life that build up their stress and their anxiety uh, that are not directly connected to the situation right. They can just you can just go to the play park where they really wanted to go, and they meet a child, and they and they exhibit aggressive behavior. Um, but there's no for no apparent reason. There's, there's no behavior without cause. Well, that's what I'm saying for no apparent reason. But there might be an underlying theme going on. For example, you having a you having a baby, right, and not giving the child as much attention, the older child as much attention as he was used to, and he may be feeling stressed about it. He may be feeling threatened by the new baby. He may be feeling, you know, I don't know if mommy still loves me, kind of theme going on, and it can build up. And then just and then just come out in, the, in an unexpected situation as, as an aggression, because the aggression is 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 the result of the fear, the stress that's building up in the child, the the insecurity. Okay, or sometimes, <laughs> okay, not always. Sometimes kids can experiment, but you usually know that because if they're just experimenting, see what happens when I hit this person. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, <laughs> It's a one-time thing, you know, it's not going to be a recurrent behavior. It, usually, if you talk to them about it, they might try it another three times, but it's not something that would usually bother you because it doesn't happen again and again. But if the problem is happening again and again, there's, there's usually something underneath that going on, either psychological or physical, as I said before, you know. Um, sometimes kids can be aggressive just because they lack the tools to approach other kids, right? If they're not, especially the if they're non-verbal. Yes. Okay. You know, they want to play with someone and they don't know how to initiate the the the, the, the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, the interaction is a better word. Um, so they'll go and, and, and hit the kid because it gets them a reaction. They, they don't know how, how better to do that. Right? It gets them attention is what it gets. Them. Yeah. Um, Yes, and there was something else. Oh, yes, and also uh, you can notice that aggression in children, um, unless unless there is like a major psychological factor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, aggression in in like toddlers um, is, in my opinion, interconnected with uh, uh, lack of verbal expression. You know, they they have very limited verbal skills, and the less verbal they are. Um, mm -hmm. the more likely they are to express their frustration, not being able to express whatever they want by, by being aggressive. 
right? So if, if you've got a kid that can't talk <laughs> until like the age of three, is he's is likely to get frustrated with the fact that you don't understand them and be violent. So there are there are different situations, but in, it's always you know you always have to evaluate what's happening. Uh, try to see if there are any common factors that you can that you can see every time that the kid is being violent. If there's something you know, oh he's always violent when there's a lot of kids around, then you can assume that it's because he's overstimulated, right? Or or he feels threatened by too many children around him, and you can prevent to a certain extent. If you know what's causing it, you can prevent the behavior. Um, so after after you take him, what what happens in the situation? After you take him out of the situation of the, of the aggression, um, you want to calm them down, right? You don't want to you don't want to yell at them, you don't want to spell them, spank them, you don't want to tell them off because um, there's usually no point. Um, what I would do is use positive um, positive talk and tell them things that you want them to learn like like you know they, they say you, you tell them hands are not for hitting Posi but positive talk that's what I'm just going to explain okay. Okay. <laughs> you know sometimes sometimes uh, some people say oh you tell them hands are not for hitting but we know that toddlers have problems with knots right they just what? hear not not the word not oh okay <laughs> negative language yeah so sometimes they just hear hitting right mm -hmm. you tell them hands are not for hitting and they hear hitting <laughs> so um you want to tell them you know hands are for cuddling or you want to tell them you know well, that, show that, that's them that's focus you know? that's that's making positive statements to change the focus of the child yeah rather than rather than negative statements that actually focus on what you don't want them to do. Yeah, exactly. You 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 tell them, you know, this is what we do, you know, mm -hmm. when we're nice. Or you tell you, you you can you can just very shortly say um we, I don't know, we, we say please if we want a toy or whatever. This is how we do it. Um uh, you calm them down. Uh, the best way to calm them down is just to stay with them, <laughs> be be kind, be gentle. You know, take them out, away from the situation, give them a cuddle, stay with them. You know, let them get it out if they need to cry or if they need to, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Put away your phone. My phone? No, it's not here. Parents, I'm talking about. Oh, uh, yeah. When you're talking about phones, when I'm talking about aggressive behavior. Because the parents need to focus on what their children are doing. Yes, absolutely. So to do that, they have to put away the phone. Yeah. Fuck the phone. Because you know, so many parents who should be focusing on the needs of their kids are staring at the the little screen that they that they carry around with them. So, you know, turn it off. It's not going to kill you. Turn it off. And focus on your child and your child's needs. Unless you are surfing the internet for solutions to behavioral problems with your, yeah. with your child or you're watching this podcast. Anyhow, when the child comes down, right, uh, what you can do is it's always a good idea if if they can handle it, okay, if they can mm -hmm. handle going back into the group of children or going back into the interaction, um, you can, you know, tell them it's a nice thing to say sorry. You can um, model it, right? You can go to the other child that's been hit and you can go, you know, I'm sorry. You can show them how you say I'm sorry. Or you can, you know, you don't you don't say, go there and say sorry and, and the kid just starts crying again or whatever. <laughs> you just gently model apologizing, being respectful, and they're going to catch up. You don't have to catch up. They're going to they're going to, you know, get it eventually. You don't you don't have to force them. To apologize. Well, it's not something you. It's also not something you have to teach directly, because if you put the child into the right environment, they're going to learn that automatically. Now, the right environment, for example, could be sport, where a child learns to deal with their emotions through sport. For example, if you say to a child, or or try to explain to a child, even to you know let it go, it, it's probably not going to get through. But if you put the child into a framework or setting in sport where 
let's say the classic example in football where you you lose a goal mm-hmm. you have to let it go you have to let go of your frustrations and refocus on oh yeah on, absolutely but this on, this this again you know, works with older kids i mean when, doing you, the next thing when you start football you get just, back into the game yeah you start around five five years old right maybe if you know the kids start practicing football around the age of five some some of them at two yeah it's changed has it they're doing it okay. earlier okay anyway um Tiger Woods, wasn't he on, on television at the age of three or something playing golf? I don't know. So yeah, it, it's it's much <laughs> earlier now. Okay. I've 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 only I'm you know, I'm limited. I've only ever seen seen uh football groups that do it from the age of five. Oh yeah, did you get team usually the team sports begin at that point, but the parents have started them much younger. Okay. Okay. They're working on those skills from some of them from before the, the children can walk. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a bit extreme, but it does produce results and it does um, help develop the child's skills. Okay. It, it okay. brings them on a little bit faster in certain areas. Cool. There you go. So, um, Sport is learning to control anger, fear, and pain all hmm. at the same time. Okay, okay, yeah. But the tools, the tools really have to come from the parent always, or or the or the, the carer of the child, right? I don't know if you, you probably don't just leave the kid in a football club at the age of two, right? So I just, you probably, I just said yeah, that you do you do it with five, them, five, yeah. You, you deal with them as a parent. So the tools to manage that anger, you you can't just uh, um, expect them to be able to manage it just because they're playing football. You you always have to teach them the tools to manage it first, right? Well, you learn that you can't play the sport properly if your focus is not on the right area. That's what I was telling my teenage clients last week. I mean, mm-hmm. you're, I'm going to sneeze again do it anyway yeah but uh, <laughs> yeah but but you, we're talking about toddlers right you can talk you can talk to talk you can tell toddlers that they ha- focus has to be in the right area but they're not going to understand you very much because it's very abstract they need they need concrete things they need particular examples right um, so, about your teenage students? I might sneeze again. No, I don't know. Do it. Do it. It's the morning. Let thing. your hang to, ha- ha- hair <clears throat> hang down. Sneeze to sneeze. Sneeze. My, my teenage students, it's, I, I can, I can see the ones that are aggressive, right? And the ones that yeah. are aggressive tend to focus on negative issues rather than positive issues. Okay. So, and, and here, here's again a very simple, stupid example. Mm-hmm. There's five minutes left in the football match and you lose a goal. Mm-hmm. Right? So you can focus on the fact you lost a goal with five minutes to go, or you can focus on the fact that there's five minutes more. <laughs> and that focus changes entirely your your mindset and your reaction to the situation mm-hmm. and those young people that i've noticed with aggressive behavior mm-hmm. tend to hold on to the negative element for too long they tend not to be able to let it go and move on because you have to let go of the fact that you've lost the goal and move on to the fact that you that you have to well we all know make up that. for that error we all know that our emotions come from inside of us, right? So it's largely about the attitude that you have towards the reality that creates your own frustration. The reality is not creating your frustration. You are creating your frustration, right? Because it's about the attitude. You've lost a match and you can say, hey, that was a great time I had with my friends here watching the match. Who cares whether we lost or won, right? 
Oh, that was, that was always my opinion as a kid. My opinion yeah. as a kid was uh, was uh, I had fun with my friends. It didn't really matter that much. Exactly. Or you can be miserable about it, you know, half a day. And you're creating your own frustration. It's your choice how you're going to emotionally react to the reality, basically. So this is, yes, this is absolutely a skill or a habit that you need to pass on to your children to, to you know, but I think you model it. I think they pick it up. If you, if you, if you model it, they pick it up. If you model the positive attitude towards things, they pick it up. I mean, you, do you know me? I'm a, I'm a, I'm an optimist, an optimist. And I've just, I've picked it up on that. Optimist. Ophthalmologist. And I picked it up, I picked it up from the person often. that's sitting next, ne in the next room, right? Because, that one. yes, because that one. <laughs> that's my mom, because she was always the person, you know, when we went out for like uh, uh, hiking, right? And she's an optimist. Yes, and it's. I don't and, think so. Because you don't know her. And it started I, I, raining and it would be horrible and muddy and wet and cold and awful, you know. She wouldn't say, this is awful. She'd just say, this is Ooh. an adventure, right? <laughs> So she always had a positive view of things, even even if they weren't appearing to be positive. She always took something out of them. She always took, oh, well, at least we learned this, or you know. And I I find that very helpful in life. Uh, so I'm, it's I'm also helpful when people give thumbs up or likes or hearts on the, the videos online. Just adding that. <laughs> Right. Um, so, or so share the podcast. Even. We should That's we should cool. definitely model the something's going the, on. Uh, the, the positive the positive attitude to things because that is exactly that that creates that creates your reality. That basically creates your attitude creates your reality. It creates where you're going to be frustrated. It creates whether you're going to be aggressive because the aggressive stems from the frustration and the the feeling of helplessness, for example. You know. So, um, well, okay, here's another perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It is possible to be aggressive when you think that you are being positive. I've seen that in people. No, in toddlers, no. Well, I've seen it in adults and I, who I didn't know when they were young. But I imagine that it was learned when they were young and uh, reinforced through repetition and not ever corrected, not that it needs to be exactly corrected, but um, I think you, uh, you, you, you get the point. It needs to be um, dealt with or it needs to be observed more carefully or it needs to be guided. I think you do that sometimes. Uh, what? Being aggressive and thinking that it's positive. I don't disagree with that. You know, when I when I tell you I don't I don't like this, <laughs> I don't like this behavior that you're exhibiting, and you would say I'm I'm only doing it for your own good, kind of thing. You would say, but if I didn't well, do I'm not it, doing I'm it helping you. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm not doing it for your good. I'm doing it for for everybody's good, right? Because if, if I was saying doing it for you good, it might, that would suggest that it might be bad for me, which would be silly, right? Because obviously it wouldn't be bad for me. So there's a there's obviously a universal good at play. Yes, but but it's the the, the point is you don't if you do something to other people that the other people do not like and choose not not to be a part of, and you're saying that it's it's because it's good for them, it's basically gaslighting. It's telling them you don't know what's good for you. You don't. Your emotional reactions don't matter. They are. They are not but if valid you, uh, because it's good for you. That's basically gaslighting. That's basically. I have to examine that more. But if you know more about a topic than someone else knows, then you are quite justified in believing you can make a better decision about that topic. Yes, but you still can. have to respect the other person's opinion. I respect uh, the other person's opinion, but I don't like to see other people something. making mistakes. Not that people don't need to make their own mistakes. Yes, but I'm talking about aggressive behavior, like like uh, like 
you know, we always have a problem with the language. You always use a, a well, I, I would call it aggressive language. And I, uh, and I always have a problem with that. You know, I say, don't, don't talk to me like that. I don't like it. And, you, and then you would say, well, that's for your own good. Words. Right? <laughs> Words, Mr. Wordsworth. <laughs> Words. Um, they have power, all of them. Yes. And the words that people are more afraid to use take on a greater power of their own. This is a common problem in language. And the only way to disempower the words is at times to use them more often. And then a classic example of this in society was the way the white people used the word nigger to talk about black people in a bad way. The black people came and they took the word and they started to use it amongst themselves. And over time, the word lost its power. And did it? It did. Yeah. You're still going to get beat up if you, if you call a black man. No, it's kind, of, it's kind of more. It's kind of kind of more humorous now because the blacks can go. Yeah, look, we've taken the power back on that. It doesn't affect us anymore. No, it's you know, I know what you mean. I know what it's you not mean. a derogatory uh, term because people have become um, familiar with it. They've taken the power away from the language. Now, the language that people fear to use is symbolic of other fears that they have. See, I don't fear to use any language or any words because I know that that I don't want the words to have power or control over me. Yes, I but it's not about you. Words. In the in the interaction it's not about you. It doesn't matter. It does matter very much. <clears throat> it's my it's my choice to choose the words. It is completely your choice. It is it is your choice to be aggressive towards somebody. It doesn't show respect at all. To choose something because something is better for to to just to tell someone this is this is better for you even though you don't like it, even though you don't prefer, you know, even though you don't choose to do it. This is better for you, so I'm going to do this. It's like the top top of the it's, disrespect that I can imagine. It's like, like in, in completely terms, dismissing somebody on, else's... On terms, in terms of language, I'm, I'm going to use all of the words with, with equality. Even, even though, though, even even though, though you hurt equal. people. Even though I you think hurt. people have to get over their own you're like hurting people. Softness. I, know. <laughs> I haven't said any of that. You're having a conversation with yourself about hurt. Right? No, but that's the point. My point is that some people, some people, some words can hurt, right? And when I tell you that these, these, these words hurt me, right? Don't use them. Then um, um, no, I think people have become soft in the modern age. I think you, you've got all this but social this is justice warrior very... stuff. Where, oh, he said this to me, and she said that to me. You know, that's name calling. You know, I mean, I'm not just talking to, in general. I'm talking just in have a to, you know, relationship. Harden their tortoise shell. Oh, well, you can. Too this many is, people are too offended. You see, far this is a too easily. very dangerous. I think this is a very dangerous uh, stand that you're taking because you can use it's that with important stand. You can use that with any type of violence. Do you know how many violent no, 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 you can't, people use you that can't, for physical you violence? Can't, you can't jump from non-physical to physical as the same thing. That, that's that's why you're a, wrong. No, that's that's a psychological. Uh, that, that's a psychological step. For example, okay, no, no, let, 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 let me prove this point. Okay, mm -hmm. let me prove this point. Um, the right to free speech, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the right to punch people. It's the right to free speech. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they cannot be the same thing. Yes, but you can you can get sued for for uh, sued. You can eat. You you have the you have the 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 insult thing, right? You said this no, person no, 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 publicly no. offended me. Or no, 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 me. no. That's 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 not any kind of legal thing, right? It's not illegal to offend somebody. It's not. 
it's illegal. It's illegal. To, it's not. It's not illegal. No. It's not illegal to offend. That's called free speech. It's not illegal. Uh, sorry, it's not okay. illegal to offend anybody. It's not. It's illegal to slander somebody, which means to lie and attempt to defame their character or destroy their business. That is illegal. Okay, but it's not, social. It's, it's, not, social. It's, not, it's, not, um, it's not illegal to, to have a comment. It's not. Okay. It's not anywhere uh, illegal. Scientific it should studies. Never be, but it, it should never be because, because that is just society going straight back to the Stone Age. And, you know, you might as well just give everyone a club to club each other. Scientific studies show Done. that verbal abuse and physical abuse cause the same kind of psychological damage. That makes sense. Okay. I would, I would, I would, I would, so, I, I would agree with that, and also at the same time categorizing those two things very differently. Okay, yes, they can have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're different. And it's the same way that um, you can punch someone in the face or you can hit them with a baseball bat, right? I know they it's, are it's, different. It's, I know you can't kill different. someone with words. No, that's not, no, 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 that's where you're wrong. I didn't call that's you an idiot wrong. and that's going to kill you. It's not going to kill you if I call how, you. Like how many people hang themselves? Okay. How many people commit suicide because of uh failures in relationships well that is what i'm saying i'm saying language. that the psychological so, harm so, so caused it, no, by no, 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 you said it doesn't it doesn't kill you not directly okay it doesn't matter if it's it doesn't matter if it's direct or indirect you're the just, result is exactly the same it doesn't you, matter you just don't let me talk i do yeah. you, you're, but if you build an argument Based on a false premise. Okay, I'm sorry. I forgot. To, I didn't. False. I didn't say the word directly. You cannot directly kill someone by saying something to them, but you can. Wait, 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 wait. They you, can. I'm not oh, going to wait oh. because I haven't finished my sentence. Can, you, can, you can I finish slow down my for sentence? Because I have please. to fix the internet. Yeah. I'll fix the internet and I'm, I'm going to talk to do quietly. technical stuff and have this conversation at the same time. So, um, you can inflict psychological harm, which I said before. Okay. So. Uh, which can then result in people developing a depression and killing themselves. Absolutely. And I would say that that's, I would say that behavior is directly responsible, even it though is. it takes a longer period it's of time. It's not immediate, okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's still directly responsible. Um, so, um, so I don't think that verbal, verbal aggression should be dismissed as, oh, that's okay. Well, I just said that words kill. I just said the words kill. Yeah, you did. But you also said before that, you know, I'm going to that 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 words that you should oh, look. that you should take power away from words by basically using them, right? You're like, well yes, people I have to get over it. People have to get over their softness. They do. And I said that's a dangerous stance because you can say, Oh, people have you have to get rid of you you have to get over your softness and, and then and then use the verb. You know, how can you get rid of or over your softness if words have the power to kill someone? If you use them violently or aggressively or abusively. You can use them proactively without using them violently, aggressively or abusively. Yeah, I know that. That's what we're doing now. Right? That's my point. But my point is that using your words... Um, using words that the other person doesn't want you to use because they find it abusive or they find it aggressive, telling them that it's for their own good, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing like beating your child up and telling them it's for their own good. Psychologically, when it comes to psychological effects and when it comes to the respect, right? It doesn't show any respect. Okay. It dismisses the person's oh, emotions and opinions. That, okay. that, that, there, there's and, a line that you crossed there, which is not logical. And it's a stance of power. It's you're in a doing that. You're putting yourself in a position of power where you can decide what's good for other people. And that is I can not decide respectful. what's good for other people. I have that right. I can decide what's good for my kids. I have that right. I have that role. I have that responsibility. But you also and to do nothing would be wrong. 
but you have to, to say nothing. But you have you to want. respect their preferences. Uh, you have to respect their yes, autonomy and they to have a to, certain and they have extent. to respect my legal responsibility as a parent. I have more experience. I respect their choices. Then I give them freedom, but I have more experience of certain things than they do. You, you, that that's just the way it is. You, you Where is the line? The, sorry. Where is the line? Uh, I don't. Depends what the topic is. You know. What's your topic? Give the... me a topic. I'll give you a line. <laughs> you know, you're talking in generalisms. Okay, let, let's be specific. Give me a topic. I'll give you a line. Okay, it's cold outside. My child, my child says they're warm, and they're not going to wear the jacket. Are you going to? Are you going to force them to wear a jacket because that's what's good for them? Or are you going to let them decide for themselves? And you're going, going to respect their opinion. And if if they feel warm, you're going to let them run around in short sleeves because because you, you trust that they actually feel warm you can let me answer that question after because, i finish my question yes i am because you asked the question and then answered it no i didn't you did i asked the question you listen to it back again you asked the question and then you answered no it. i just gave you two options to choose from that's not that's, answering the uh, question that's, a, that's not an open question give me an open <laughs> question and i will give you who said i have question. to ask open questions ask ask okay now you can't ask the question i said give me a question i'll give you an answer Give me, a, give me a specific question. I will draw you a line. You haven't given me a specific question yet. I just did. No, you didn't. You just cho chose to ignore it. Okay. okay, ask it again. If it's very specific, ask it again. You can listen back to this and you can check it. You'll see that I'm right. If it's cold outside and your child wants not doesn't want to wear a jacket, right? Can I what answer that now? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Very simple. I am going to carry the jacket with me. And when we go outside and the child starts to go, I'm going to say, perhaps you should put the jacket on because, you know, when you get cold, you get sick and, uh, and you get ill and it's not a good thing. Look at what dad's wearing. Um, you know, dad's wearing a jacket because cause dad doesn't want to get cold. Look at the other kids. They're wearing jackets as well. So I'm going to try to persuade them based on the environmental situations that their choice for themselves is not good and if they say no dad i still don't want to wear a jacket i'll say okay let's wait five or ten minutes let's give it some time let's see how you feel then good there's your line that's great that's great that's a that's how you do respect that's you, progressive parenting you value you value the other person's feelings and opinions you don't dismiss them you don't say you're cold you just don't know about it right you don't say put that jacket on because that's what's good for you Right, but that's what you're doing if you're being verbally aggressive, and the per the other person says, "Excuse me, I do not want you to talk to me this way. I have a problem with that. Can you please not talk to me this way?" And you say, "But it's that's what's better for you." That's dismissing their everything. That's ga that's gaslighting. Telling someone this is better for you, you don't know what's good for you, that's gaslighting. It depends on the specific situation. That's a, it's a big general term. That's like saying, that's like saying, in some of the trees are green. Yeah, all the, all the ones that are. No, I think it know, applies not, in not every green, situation. I think it applies in every situation. Telling someone they don't know what's good for them is gaslighting in, in any situation. It's very general, though. I mean, there's but no, it, it there's applies there's... generally. Every, anybody can say anything in general, and it sounds okay. When you get down to the specifics, it's, it's, it's very different. You can give me a specific situation. I don't where have it's, any, it's I don't, not gaslighting. I don't have a, it's gaslighting in every situation. It's not, it's, you not, think it's, of. it's not. It's not me that has a problem with it. So, why should I give you an example of something that I don't have a problem with? Because there are no examples if I don't have a problem. Well, I think you should think about it because it's what you do. You haven't given any examples. I just to give you an example, like when I when you tell me something aggressive and I tell you that I don't like you to talk to me that way, and then you say it's you don't know it's good for you. You say it's good for you. I'm doing it for your own good. A lot of people are soft. 
So what? It doesn't matter if they choose to be soft. It doesn't matter. You're supposed to respect their choices and respect their emotional stance to something. I have a lot of respect. <laughs> no, you, you, you don't. You still haven't given any specific example. I just did. You didn't. It's not specific. It's general. But do I have to give you the exact word that you use? Yeah. Otherwise, it's general. Like you, okay, you have to treat it this way, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to make a uh, cognitive positive direct argument that has effect you have to imagine that you're in a court of law this is how it works nothing that you've said will have any weight in a court of law the judge the lawyers would look at you and laugh right and I'm not just saying that, that that's exactly what would happen so you have to yes, because we're talking about about verbal expression, and, and you just told me that it has no legal stance. So, no, you missed the point. You missed the point that um, anybody can talk in specifics. So, sorry, anybody can talk in generalisms and think they're specifics, because most people do. Unless your point is specific, then there is no point. I mean, you can make general statements, right? But anybody can come along and take any general statement. You can even do it with so-called scientific facts. You can come along and find one exception to it and, and, and you know, destroy the whole premise of the theory. But um, th that's why it's necessary to have very specific situations because when people talk in generalisms that's when problems occur okay i'm going to give you i'm going to give you an oh, example it's getting dark on the... <laughs> i to give you an exact example an exact word okay no For it example, has to be an exact conversation not an exact word i Words. cannot recreate an well, exact conversation, of, conversation that happened then it's out of context i'm not a freaking it's recorder out of con it's out of context well that's why i record all of my work the reason why i record audios of all of my work is because people a make mistakes b take things out of context and c then use that to build false arguments and this happens every single day of my life and that's why i record all of my work everything is the the audio of all the situations and all the conversations are specifically recorded and it's funny because since i started recording it there have been far less problems or issues with any of my clients because everyone knows everything is recorded and the moment they have an issue or a problem I can just take take the audio send it to them and say dude it done there you go no that's great but you can't that's, do that that's with a the relationship and with a, with a just you know day-to-day -day conversation at a kitchen table that would just be sick wouldn't it but you have to act as if that is what is happening because that's the only way to go forward that's the only way for society to progress. If you're building things based on, otherwise we'd be back in superstition. We'd be living in the age of superstition if, if we didn't use these tools, right? Look at the way that, um, um, look at the way the video cameras reduce the amount of crime. Look at the way that um, all the stupid shit and, and miracles and UFOs kind of all just kind of disappeared as soon as everybody had a mobile phone in their pocket with, um, you know, with a camera in it, right? There's, there's, there's much more. Did they disappear? Yeah, they did. There's, there's much less um, people telling stories about certain things that, that happened because people used to tell stories all the time. I mean, it was a huge problem in society. People were just made up stuff and nobody had any way of checking whether it was real or true or not. And that's a massive problem from history. And the scientific method and the introduction of recording audio and recording video completely change that and help society take steps forward it's not perfect but um we use these things to uh, to our advantage and we have to use them to our advantage it's necessary for the survival of humanity that we use these things to our advantage because there's a huge difference between what you think and what is and the only way to check that, the only way to control that, the only way to understand that, the only way to grow is to have a recording 
of what has happened. And the so great you want me to, next time, me, next time you're doing this, you want me to record it? Why yeah. do, what do you think this is? What do you think they're making a podcast is? What do you think putting a, a live Facebook show is? It's a way of recording reality. It's, it's a, way a way to communicate advice yes. that might help people out there about parenting. As a, and that's fantastic. That's the way that it, that it should be. It's also a way of detailing and recording reality that has never been available to, to humanity before and allows us to take those little steps forward that we haven't been able to do for the last 10,000 years. I mean, the, the alternative is to go back to living in caves again. And uh, the, this, the same way that um, some people do that. Um, so, so some people do that. They, they choose not to live in the modern society. They go to Indonesia and they live in trees. They go on the internet, you can check it out, right? It's like to go but, for a holiday. <laughs> my parents have already been there. In the trees? Yeah. Your parents have joking. been everywhere. <laughs> Your parents have been like everywhere. Yeah, and they. Oh, I've been there. I've chased the lion around the Sahara in a jeep. I cried when I saw the giraffes. Oh, wait a minute. Lions don't live in Sahara. <laughs> Oops. Savannah. You, you, you see? <laughs> this is this. this what this is? What? This see. is an opportunity to. Having everything recorded is an opportunity to look back and uh, to find errors, to, um, to, to, to visualize progress. I mean, this is the equivalent to, um, you know, like the camera for photography, right? Now you can take pictures of your kids and all the, the great things and events. And we've, um, like we go on Facebook and we look back through the pictures that are there. They remind us of things that we forgot, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there was a time when none of that existed. Right? I know. I lived in that time. Yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> and all those memories are gone. And they'll never come back. And they're no, gone. They're, they're in your brain. No, no, they're, they're forgotten. You're never gonna, you're never gonna think about them because you can't remember them. Because that's the way the human brain works. You better go. Mm -hmm. You better go and deal with the kids because I think that's. Is that Jazzy? Jazzy is. Um, Jazzy is awake and she's not going to be um, sat satisfied by by her mother who has. Uh, closed the door and shut her in the room when what she wants is to spend time spend time with her mother and the grandmother thinks she's doing the right things but she's not so there you go we very often make mistakes we try to do the right thing and uh, and uh, or we just we just don't think we just don't think you know the adults tend to think they know what's best for kids but they don't spend the time that they need to take listening to the kids, because uh, kids kids kind of know what they want, and there's a there's a general instinct of, of honesty and truth that exists there. And all that um, Jazzy wanted was uh, to uh, to find her mother and cuddle her. And uh, uh, the grandmother decided to close the door and keep her in the room. So it's another example of um, how <coughs> misunderstandings occur between the between the generations. If you'd like more information about what we do and the topics that we discuss, then you can find them at www.nsa-slovakia.com. You can find uh, the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching on YouTube and on Facebook as well. If you follow me, then you can get live notifications of uh, what's happening each day. And if you follow my Facebook page, you get extra videos, extra tricks, tips, pointers that will keep things moving forward for you in your parenting life. And um, it's a constant process of growth. It's a constant process of development. It's a constant process of sharing. It's uh, important to know that there's no one person who has all the right answers. And um, it's only through sharing ideas, the way that people do on the internet, that they do through Facebook, and they, they share their thoughts through Twitter, and they share their 
uh, like maybe recipes through through Pinterest. It's putting this information out into the world that allows people to to think about um, what is the right way to go for for them. It's the ideas that allow people to to sharpen their brain, and I think the the brain is the greatest tool that we have because uh, we either use words or we use swords, and so it's always better to use words and to find peaceful solutions to to problems to to negotiate and um, to explore to listen and to learn to uh hello hello over there hello over there with a big smile with a big smile on your face yeah. Well, why don't you come over here with the remote? Why are you standing over there? Why are you standing in the middle of the room waving the remote at the monitor rather than coming over here having a conversation? I can do it. You can give it to me. I can reach from here. What did you put on? I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's going to work all right because I've just, you know, what? it's been like that for ages. Is it not? Is it not loading up? I don't know. It says loading. I don't know what's happening. Mm. Anyway, you wonderfully, women, women you wonderfully deflected the conversation. <laughs> Look. What? Well, it says press the return button. You put on a file that doesn't work. No, I did not. That no, file no, no. usually. Look who's aggressive. Bloody no. hell. Because you're standing there not doing anything. I'm not, not. What, me? I can't do anything because you've got the remote. What do you want me to do? Do, 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 do. Okay, so Superwise on. Jazzy's going to get a reading adventure. And uh, she's going to fall asleep again. She's playing with her hair. Because she always... To fall asleep again. Yeah. Yeah. She's still sleepy, but she's not going to fall asleep again. Anyway, so back to the topic, right? Sure, we can do another five minutes on the topic because uh, we've, we've done ninety already. So, so we have. Uh, I will. I will very happily discuss the topic for five minutes, and then. No, I just wanted to. I just wanted we'll to go project. over it very quickly, you know. And again, just just to repeat the steps, like what to do when your child is aggressive. You, you know, calm down, calm the child down, remove them from the situation. Tell them, you know, kid, hands are hands are for cuddling, hands are for nice interaction, hands are not for hitting, but don't tell them they're not for hitting because hands for they stroking. don't. <laughs> yes. stroking. Hands are for stroking, yes, exactly. I wouldn't use the negatives, I would use the positive so the child understands it. Uh, think about what's behind the behavior. Yeah. Um, when you, when address you... the need that's behind the behavior. Do not address the behavior immediately in the situation, but the need that's behind the behavior. You know, give them a break, give them some food, um, or you know, address consistently and proactively the the any type of anxiety that could be hiding behind the behavior. And last point that I didn't manage that with, to make. You could do all that with adults as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, kids. absolutely. And the last point that I didn't manage to make was um, give them the tools to handle their own emotions. You know, teach them about the emotions. Tell them, you know, tell them you're... If, if they're not really, if the emotion behind the anger, if the triggering emotion is something else like fear, tell them you're worried that this is going to happen or tell them uh, you're being a bit overwhelmed, you know, so that they know what they're feeling, um, except for the anger or well, besides the anger. Okay. And think about some, think about the toolbox, right? Um, think about the fact that um, like if you're a workman, that you carry around this toolbox with you. Mm -hmm. It's full of different things that you might or might not need, but you try to carry everything around with you. Mm -hmm. You okay? You, oh, sorry, I thought you were playing with something. There. <laughs> it's like, you said, talk to them. <laughs> them, okay. So, yeah, the, the, the toolbox is, is key. Um, you know, you've got a toy box for all the different toys. So, what you need is a, the, uh, 
the, the parenting toolbox, which is uh, the the box that you can open when there's a problem, and you can go there in your mind, and you can look through the different techniques that you uh, that you understand, and you can try to employ them when you have uh, the problem that, that you need to to fix. I don't think there's any quick fix to just any consistent, problem just but, consistently uh, addressing the behavior in the same calm, gentle, kind manner. Because remember, the kid is not the bad guy. Do not punish. Do not punish the child because it's not going to help the situation. It's not going to relieve the kid's stress. It's going to add on to it and it's going to make the behavior worse. So do not punish the kid. Tell them the behavior is not okay. Okay. Tell them this is the right thing to do. But do not punish them because they're not, they can't help it. Okay. If they're being aggressive, they're doing it because it's the last resort. It's the only way they know how to communicate whatever whatever trait they were trying to communicate before because they probably were trying to communicate it before but we didn't, we didn't pick up on it either because they're not verbal or maybe we were too busy or, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, don't, don't punish them for expressing their emotions because it's a natural thing to do. It's like punishing someone for being hungry. So, uh, and the last thing is, in a practice, the appropriate expression of the emotions in a calm environment, right? In when you're when you don't have a problem, but you're having a nice time with your kids, you're playing together or something. You know he's quite happy. You can always practice um, in through play the appropriate reaction. You know when you, for example, uh, I used to tell my kids, you know, when you're angry say I'm angry if they're verbal. If they're not verbal yet, you can teach them to stomp their feet or to, I don't know, hit the cushion, whatever is... Stamp their feet. Stamp their feet, sorry. Whatever is, uh, whatever is okay with you, okay? If it's okay with you that the kids stamp their feet, tell them if you're angry, stamp their feet and model it, you know, through play. Take little stuffed animals and go, oh, I'm a bunny, I'm so angry, I'm going to stamp my feet. Mm -mm -mm right and you stamp the feet or you do it together you you go like funny laughingly say oh you just ran away from me i'm so angry i'm going to stamp my feet and you stamp your feet so that the child sees that when you're angry you do that right and uh, of course you model the expression of the emotions verbally so they know what to call the emotion or to say to the other person when they want to communicate the emotion because that empowers them and that helps them deal with it right when once you name once you name the enemy you know you're less afraid of it right yeah. you've got certain power over it so it empowers that just the fact that they know what they're feeling empowers them to to deal with the emotion in a different manner well i see it like a like a musical <laughs> instrument if you imagine a guitar you're always tuning it right mm -hmm. you know life is always the songs that you play are always, you know, stretching the strings and, you know, slowly putting it out of tune. And uh, you always need to, uh, you know, fine tune the strings. You always need to constantly work on it to keep to keep it in tune to uh, to have uh, harmony in your life. And so, uh, parenting is, uh, you know, fine tuning the essential skills that you need to uh, to be happy. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's giving them the skills. Four, four years. Yeah. 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 It's giving them the skills, yeah. definitely, yeah. and giving them tools to yeah. to be able to deal with situations in life appropriately and in a in a manner that doesn't harm themselves or anybody else. Well said. This was the Practical Parenting Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we will be back with uh, more of the same and maybe something a little bit different in the near future. Um, catch up with us online, like, share, subscribe, do all the cool things. And um, the sun is shining, so we're off to um, do sunny things, I suppose. Right. <laughs> Um, any final thoughts? Have a nice day. Enjoy. Have a nice day. Enjoy the Have a nice day, wherever you are. Have a nice day. You're laughing at my accent. Yes. You're having fun with me. Yes, I am.
exactly what I'm doing. Lovely. Bye bye, people on Lovely. the internet. Lovely. Bye bye. Bye bye. Speak to you soon. Take Thanks care. for watching. And listening. <laughs>